San Diego's premiere of the one-man play about President Lincoln at the Birch North Park Theater explores Lincoln's last day from the perspective of the doctor who tended to him in his final hours. Joining me to talk about his play is Hershey Felder, actor, playwright, and composer of An American Story for Actor and Orchestra. Hershey, thanks so much for talking with us today about Thank this play. Me. There Thank seems you. to be a resurgence of interest in President Lincoln. Why do you think that is? I think he represents um, the everyman rising to the occasion and doing something absolutely incredible and changing the entire world. And this is something that people relate to. I don't think it's as much that we're looking for the perfect president. And I also think it's fashionable, you know. But uh, I really do believe that we see something of ourselves in him, and that's what people are looking for. They're looking for reflection. A little reflection. But you play uh, the doctor. You play President Lincoln's doctor. Um, tell us more about your character. It's less that he was his doctor than he happened to be a doctor in the house, where the phrase comes from, at the theater when Lincoln was shot. He was a 23-year-old nobody, a Union Army surgeon who had just entered the Union Army after uh, studies at Bellevue Hospital in New York, and suddenly wanted to study the president's face, found himself at Ford's Theater, and Mrs. Lincoln puts him in charge. I mean, talk about, you know, um, having your stock go up all of a sudden. And so it was really quite a miraculous thing for him to be there, but by the same token, he found himself in the middle of history, and he had no idea how he got there or what he was doing there, and yet he cared for Lincoln for those last nine hours, believing that Lincoln had uh, could not hear because uh, could not see because of his injury, and that he couldn't speak, but he believed he could hear. And so, while he directed traffic going to the house across the way, what kind of um, aid, aids were uh, administered to the president? He held the president's hand, and he believed that he wanted the president to die, knowing he had a friend, and that just moved me beyond. So I said, "Okay, this is a story that needs to be told." It, through his perspective, that yeah, was the, those yeah. final um, sort of kind yeah. moments. Twenty-three-year-old would think of this. I mean, there are people who would think of it, but I was just so amazed how he had the presence of mind and the elegance and the nobility. And he, this guy lived till he was ninety years old and only told the story once in his life. That being this time that we're going to tell the story, I was just fascinated by that. Let's uh, listen to a clip from an American story. Sure. My dear country, my beloved people, I fondly hope, I fervently pray that this mighty scourge of war has finally passed. With malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right, as God gives us to see the right, let us strive to finish the work that we are in, to bind the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle, and for his widow. And for so something that strikes me about that clip is there was music, and, and I understand there's quite a bit of music uh, yes. in this performance. What types of music can people expect to hear? Well, it's symphonic, and it was, uh, and it's played live, and it's based on thematics of Stephen Foster, though processed through my own sense of composition. So much like in the in the way that um, historical composers would take themes of their country, say, this is what I, I did or tried to do here, and produce a score that underneath. We also have some singing in it because there are moments that require singing that happened. You know, everybody sang, and so uh, it becomes theatrical and musical in that way as well. And yet. Things like the Gettysburg Address are completely underscored, but they're all driven by the action. There's nothing in there that's a number. It's all driven by what's actually happening, and just about all of it is based on what actually happened. And this isn't the first time that you've actually played a historical figure. You've done a play on Gershwin and Beethoven, among others. What is it about the historical character that's so attractive to you? I think that it's the notion that real people find themselves in real situations and they rise to the occasion. And, you know, most of the people, the characters that I play are before they were icons. And that to me is interesting, is that w w that's our perspective of them. But they were real people, and that real people can be great. And this man, who history doesn't really know anything about, was a, a great comfort to America's greatest president. Um, or who was perceived as a man who was perceived as America's greatest president. That to me is a fascinating thing that the everyman, that there are so many cogs in the wheel, you know, that make up what the wheel does. And that's very touching to me. And so the characters, as I look back on them, all represent something in their day um, that was much part of a much greater whole. And I'm quite touched by that. Already, I want to let people know that uh, Hershey Feldler, uh, Felder's An American Story runs through February 3rd at the Birch North Park Theater. Thank you so much Thank for talking Thank you for having me. It's been a great pleasure.